Hi, I'm Kendra from Redgate's Advocate team. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can easily automate refreshing a baseline clone for SQL change automation. Now, when you're creating a SQL change automation project in SQL Server Management Studio, it walks you through a wizard. And in the wizard, there's a tab called baseline. And there it asks you how you would like to represent your starting point. So let's say you've got an existing production database that you're getting into source control. You can either create a script to represent that production database, or you can use a lightweight clone. And the lightweight clone is really beneficial. And in the wizard, what you have to do is you have to just say, oh, here's the image I'd like to use for that. It's really easy. In this video, we're going to talk about how do you refresh that image. Now, this image is really, really useful because when I'm working here in SQL change automation in my dev environment, when I click this verify button, if I'm using clone as baseline, what it does is it creates a clone of that baseline and it uses it to verify my changes again. So I've got this shadow database here. What this shadow database is, is it's a clone that's been popped into place. And this clone only takes up the amount of space for data that I change. So if production, if my image is like 10 terabytes, my clone won't be 10 terabytes. My clone will only take up the amount of things that I change. So it can be really fast to recreate and it has production-like data in it. I can also, of course, use that image. I can create a clone off that image to use in my development database as well. And this allows me to develop changes on production-like data. You can automate masking and protecting sensitive data in there so that uh, data that is restricted isn't getting into your dev environment. But I can develop on production-like data that really, really allows me to test very early on, what is this really going to look like? How is this going to perform when it gets to production? But periodically, I might want to update that baseline. Right now, if we go to my migrations tab here, I haven't done a ton of changes in this project, right? I just have a couple migration scripts here. But in the real world, we might actually make a lot of changes and have hundreds or even a thousand migration scripts. It can be good in the Agile world to deploy small batches of changes frequently, and that can add up to a lot of migration scripts. So periodically, you may want to update that clone so that it contains a new, it's, it's made from an updated image of production that now knows about, okay, what are all the changes that we've deployed in the last six months? Or even maybe in the last week, you could automate updating this on a regular basis. So I'm gonna show you how to update that image. So the first thing I'm gonna do is let's just, right now I have a couple migration scripts. Let's uh, create one more here. So I'll actually just use the graphical table designer just because I can, and we'll just do simple column. Right? We're not really doing anything too real here. We'll name our table um, demo update baseline. Really meaningful table name there. Now, in SQL change automation, when I click generate migrations, it's looking at my dev database for changes to import. It sees my new table is not yet in version control. So I'm gonna generate my migration there and it's created this new migration script for me. Now I can also go to migrations here. I can rename this. Let's update the baseline. Right. I can name it something more meaningful than that too. I can you know, hit the verify tab in case I've actually edited the script or made changes to it and I wanna make sure those changes are valid. I can do that at any time using my shadow database. So once I, you know, in the real world, I would go through some more steps here. <laughs> In the real world, I would probably be working in a different branch, right? Here on my version control tab, I would have created a different branch. I would be checking this into my branch. I would be pushing it up to my repo. I would have maybe some pull request automation validating. I would you know, be doing all of these things and then I would run it through my deployment pipelines before it got to production. We just wanna talk about updating the baseline here. So 
imagine that I've done all those steps and that this very meaningful change has reached production, right? So that, uh, just imagine that's all already happened. How do I update the baseline? Well, I'm switching now to VS Code, and that's just first convenience because we're going to look at the project file, and then we're going to run some PowerShell scripts. So I've opened my project folder in VS Code so that I can first show you my .sql proj file for the project. And when you set it up with the wizard, what it does in the SQL proj file, if you select to use clone as baseline, is it puts in these things. It says we are using clone as our provisioner. We are not using a script to represent what the production database looks like. We are using a clone to represent this. Here is where our clone server lives, right? Here's where the image resides that we'll create the clones for. We'll create the clones when we're running verify. Those are our shadow databases. We'll also create them when we're running build, right? So we'll pop a clone into place and then test the migrations against it. And then here is the name of the image to use on that clone server. So there's a couple of ways to update the baseline. Essentially, you just update the image. It's really that simple. Now, one approach you could take to this was you could say, oh, I'm going to create a new image with a new name, and then I'm going to change the name in the .sql proj file. And that would work, but it would be a little clunky just if you've got continuous integration and deployment set up. Because to make it work, you would need to, you know, you'd probably be working in a branch and you'd push it up and you'd need to do a pull request. And then you'd need to, you know, you, ha you have to share this project file with everyone. So you'd need to, for it to take effect for everyone, they would need to pull this project file down. And that just takes a little time we can actually do it faster than that. And so the way that I think is easier is to leave the .sql proj file alone and to just rotate the image with that name. We can rename images and we can move clones between images. You can do this all in the GUI if you want to do this um, to, and this can be very useful for learning the process. If you want to learn the process using the graphical dashboard, you absolutely can do all of these tasks from the dashboard here, but you can also automate them with PowerShell. So if you regularly want to update the image every month, every week, or even more frequently, you can do that with PowerShell scripts. And here are some sample scripts that do that. So the first script is going to take a backup and then create a new image from it. Now in the real world, your script for a real system will definitely be different than this. Because for most environments, your production environment is going to be quite separate from your dev environment. There's going to be firewalls between them. They are not going to be able to easily talk to each other. So in the real world, the backups for your production database are not going to be in the same PowerShell script that creates your image. But for something like a proof of concept, where you might have everything in a little sort of mini environment where you're just learning how things work, you might do it more like this. So what I have is I have a command First saying, okay, first we're just going to check the new image that we're creating, which we're going to name Northwind New. My image is named Northwind. My project is named a little differently. Um, I use Microsoft's Northwind database, which they share under the MIT license. I use that for a lot of different projects. So sometimes the project name is quite different than the image name. You will probably keep the name similar so that you know exactly what's what. You'll probably be a little saner than me. But in any case, I'm checking, uh, you, you have uh, here you specify what is the name of the image you're creating. We're saying it's going to be Northwind New. So the first thing we do is just check, does it already exist? If it already exists, we're just going to be like, hey, that image already exists. We're just going to stop. You might choose to handle that differently. But in this case, if I've already got that image there, then I have something, I stopped the previous process early and I kind of want to take a look at what's going on. If that image doesn't exist, we take a fresh backup. In this case, it's of my dev database, right? Because we're just pretending the rest of that cycle worked. In the real world, this would be your production backup. And then we're going to go ahead and connect to the clone server. And we're going to create a new image with the new name 
from that backup file path. So let's go ahead and run this script. It's checked. I don't have an image named Northwind new. It's backing up the database that has the, you know, I want to use this as my new baseline. And now it has created the image Northwind new. So now if I look on my clone instance, I've got a fresh new image that I want this one to become my baseline. And then I still have my existing one named Northwind. And notice that the Northwind database, let's see if I can get this all on the screen. It has three clones currently on it. My new image doesn't have any clones. If we look on the Northwind database, the three clones are my shadow database and two databases. One is my development database, and then another is one that I manually created that I named don't type in a demo test. So back in PowerShell in VS Code, the second step that we can do, and these could all be in one script. I just put them into three scripts for the purpose of telling a story. The second thing we did when we want to do is a switcheroo. So I'm going to rename the Northwind database to Northwind old, and I'm going to rename Northwind new to Northwind. We first, you know, we have the names we want to use up here at the top. We are checking if the things we plan to rename exist. If they do exist, we will be using the rename SQL clone image commandlet to do the renames, and then we'll be exiting. Oh, and one thing I definitely want to specify, at the top of all of these scripts in the sample repo, I'll share the sample repo in the YouTube comments. All of these scripts, I, I created these from samples, right? So I just modified samples that are already on the SQL clone site. So you could take what I've mixed and matched. You could go to the source itself. You can use these to mix and match your own scripts there. I am not a PowerShell guru. <laughs> there are very nice samples to help you get going with this. All right, so let's run this script that does the renames. So now that we've run that, if we look in our dashboard now, sure enough, Northwind has been renamed to Northwind Old. Northwind New has been renamed to Northwind. I still have my three clones on Northwind Old. So what our final script does is it looks at these clones and it selectively moves the ones that I want to move to the new image. And the reason that I'm only moving some of them is that these shadow databases will get recreated dynamically. Whenever someone goes in and you presses that verify button, if the shadow database isn't there, it'll go ahead and create a fresh clone for them. So my opinion is I may as well move these databases that are dev databases that are being used for certain purposes. But for the shadow database, I'm just going to go ahead and let it get dropped and not move them. If you want to move them, you totally can. My philosophy is just let them get recreated as needed because maybe I was working on this database last week and I needed the shadow, but maybe next week I won't be working on that. Maybe I won't need a shadow for a while. Why recreate it if we don't need it? Now, there is an important thing to know about moving clones. And that important thing is written at the top of script number three. So let's get a little more real estate here. So it does give you a warning here. When you are moving clones to a new image, if I have modified the data in that clone, it will get reset. So if I changed the data in a table, or if I added a table and generated data against it, those will get removed. I actually think this isn't a bad thing for people to get used to. So here's my take on why. In my opinion, as long as the production database is changing, it is better for me to adapt to practices that let me get the latest copy of that production data for my work. Because if we add a new column to a table, what does the data look like in that column? Well, I won't have any idea if I'm just using a column that, that doesn't have any production data or masked copies of any production data in it, right? I have to refresh regularly to keep up with production. Now, I may need to make data changes to my dev environments. I can have both. The way to have both is for schema changes and for static data changes to be regularly committing those to a branch and source control, right? So that I can just reapply from there. 
And if there are times where I need to change data in a table or populate something from generated data, it's good for me to save scripts from those. Those scripts can even, you can have scripts be automatically applied when you create some clones. So, you know, I don't even necessarily have to wait for those to be run. But the if we have an environment where we're used to clones regularly being reset, I naturally create these habits that mean that even when my environment is reset, I'm able to change it back around to how I need it to be. And I get the benefit of having it be production-like as well. So it is important to be aware that when you move clones, they are reset. But I actually don't think that that is a bad thing. So what this script does is it connects to our clone server. We tell it where we want to move the clones from and where we want to move them to. It will move the clones. I have changed the logic that says that if the name is like shadow, don't move it, just drop it. That's, that's fine for me. You can change the logic to be whatever you like. And then at the end of this script, it does remove the old image, of course. You don't have to do that if you want to keep the images around for some reason. It is all customizable for you. So running our script, it is rolling through things and we can see it just found the shadow and it said, hey, we're not moving that one. The others, it moved. So if we go back and we now look at Northwind, we can see that Northwind has two databases. It moved the two that weren't shadows. If I go back into my SQL change automation project and I click generate migrations, I did have this project open the whole time. So now it's finding, hey, I'm looking at this, you're doing some work, you don't have a shadow database, so I'm going to recreate one. I said it did that when I hit verify, it also does that when you generate migrations, right? <laughs> so it'll recreate that shadow database for you and I have updated my baseline. Well, how do I prove that it's updated my baseline? Well, um, an easy way to kind of prove that it's updated my baseline. Let's go ahead, I'm gonna delete, don't type in a demo test. Let's create a new clone, All right? So this is not being touched by SQL change automation or any automation. So we're just going to call this, don't type in a demo, we'll call it proof, right? I could have left the other one there, by the way, I just deleted it in a, an urge to tidy up. So here's don't type in a demo proof. And if we look at our tables here, what was our, uh, our table is named demo update baseline. That is the one we created in the last migration script. We can see that that in fact is when we created the clone from the new updated image that is in that clone. And if we even want to look in our migration log table, we can see in our migration log table um, that we have one, two, three migrations in there. Now I have changed the script file names for these. The migration IDs, of course, will be the same. So it is the migration IDs that SQL change automation uses to tell has your migration actually run. So quick recap, I've kind of gone through a lot of things. If you want to update clone is baseline. It's actually very simple. I would recommend just adding a new image and then doing image renaming so that you're still using the same image name for your baseline, but you've put an updated image in there based on your production database. You can do this image rotation all with PowerShell in an automated fashion. If you like, you can also do it through the GUI if you want, but I think once you take a look at the things you can do with PowerShell, setting this up to be automated on a regular basis will be the easiest thing. Do make sure that you get people used to the fact that when you refresh images, if they have dev databases created from those images, they will be reset, but the good news is they will have newer, fresher, more production-like data in there as well. Thanks for joining me for this video. I'm Kendra from Redgate's Advocate Team, and I'll see you in another video soon. Bye, folks.